We continue our special series in the cellar with visiting the vineyard and to do that this week Chris Cribb and I are at a very special place in Parkville, Missouri. Wines by Jennifer and this is Jennifer. Hello. Hi Jennifer. Hey, hola. <laughs> this is utterly charming. This house is over a hundred years old and yes. what what is the experience here at Wines by Jennifer? Every room is a different country and we are now in Spain. Okay. Welcome to Spain. Welcome <laughs> to Spain, and you, know, you two we, have been there. Jennifer had a chance to visit uh, Bodegas La Parisma a couple years ago, and so I thought let's uh, get together and talk about visiting the vineyard in Spain and kind of understand about what is different there in terms of the wines they're making, the climate, the elevation. Heck, we even got rocks. That's right. Uh -huh. so, uh, <laughs> thank you to to Jennifer. So what is unique about this area of Yekla? I mean, there's a, a different approach to winemaking there. What is it? Well, I'm first gonna give you the map and okay. say, look, you look at the map and you go, in Spain, you're on the southern side of Spain mm -hmm. and you're a little bit to the south um, and a little bit towards the, the, the coast. Um, mm -hmm. The state is Murcia. And this area is kind of a high plateau. That's right. Mm. It's just, um, you know, it's not, it's not crazy rocky area, but mm -hmm. it's it's higher in elevation than the number of the other areas around. Mm -hmm. That's right. And um, and what they've tried to be able to do is really focus in. Uh, one grape has kind of been their champion uh, on the red wines, and that's uh, Monastro, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. also known as Mouvedre. So there's a lot of little vineyards in Yecla. How have they come together to make wine? So I, I found when I looked into this area that um, there has been a history of winemaking that um, goes back about uh, 50 years as to this one cooperative. Okay. And so the idea of a cooperative um, is that growers got together, get together to be able to um, you know, increase their power and have since then been able to market a number of wines. So there's a number mm -hmm. 200 some growers that all have their own individual farm and own plots of land that they take care of and the fruit is then graded and gone into the system where the, the head winemaker and group is able to vinify and find specific mm -hmm. products. And I think so that most what does old hands mm -hmm. mean then? Well old hands is one of their micro batches and through the use of technology now they've found few vineyards that they do specifically by themselves. So they mm. take one vineyard, they, mm -hmm. they take it apart, they vinify it separately. They crush it, they stem it, they do everything separate so that this wine, for example, is 100% organic. Mm -hmm. So there's no pesticides, ah. herbicides in the vineyard. They do um, specifically um, try to give it a little bit more earthiness mm -hmm. than some of their other products. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of the other wines in the, this Old Hand series have some Syrah in them, but this one it has no Syrah, mm -hmm. so it's just 100% Monastrell. So Old Hands from the winemaker, actually, if you look at the, the Old Hands <laughs> label, you'll see yes. um, these two set of hands. It's an homage to the winemaker's father who originally brought fruit into the cooperative. So he is now the winemaker of for, for all of Bodegas La Parisma, and he makes the, the three wines we have here. We have a, a, a Caparota. Oh, thank you. The Caparota uh, Macabeo. Is that what you're wanting us to taste now and tell us what that is? Sure, sure. This is um, a white wine, Spain white wine. Um, it's known for kind of being a little bit nutty, mm -hmm. a little bit of sweetness to it. A uh, very smooth finish to it. Uh, that is a very unique wine. Very nice. That is very unique. That's delicious. It starts out one way and ends up. So it's, it's got a, ni a nice body to it, like a longer mm -hmm. finish. Um, the uh, the idea behind Macabeo is a grape type. It, it, it grows in this warmer, hot mm -hmm. environment. And it is windy too. It's the breezy, so there's lots of breeze. Yep. So when you were standing there in these vineyards, the wind was blowing mm -hmm. and what, and you've been to many vineyards, what was unique about these vineyards? I think it was just the 
beautiful, vast scenery around. Mm. You could see for miles and miles around. Now, granted, I was up on top of the <laughs> of where the grapes come in and filming mm. up, up this tiny little stairs, but the breeze was blowing. It was just absolutely serene with all the vineyards around and not a lot of village. It's really a very small community, if you remember right. So they, they take a lot of pride in the winemaking in this region. And part of the cooperative um, piece of it is that it's making sure that the small farmer that owns that land owns it and it gets passed down to family to family and taken care of by you know these specific families and that's the that's the gist of a cooperative and they're, and they're very prideful about that they make great wines at the cooperative mm -hmm. that they have great fruit in the cooperative because that's also their tourist badge if you will mm -hmm. this is you know come wow. visit our place and you can yeah have a sense of place through our wines. Mm -hmm. um, so. so, and so we see D.O. on some of the wines. What does that mean? Well, the, um, the D.O. Is a, is a way in Spain that they tell what region, how you separate the regions. Okay. And each of the regions uh, and sub-regions mm -hmm. have their own rules and quality levels mm -hmm. and ideas that you can be sort able to. Like a Stamp of approval, a good housekeeping yes, stamp it really of approval. Is. And, and, not, and not every area is given that. You have to earn it, and you are granted it through a, a process. So we have the monastrel, mm -hmm. and then we have the old hands. Yeah. So the organic monastrel, and then the trapeo mm -hmm. is um, uh, kind of our big bad red wine. Mm -hmm. the big bad. Yeah. It's the cabernet. Of it's the special Spain. wine. It's yeah. the special wine, especially from this particular uh, winery. Yes. Okay. It's, uh, this is what they've been, this is the best of the best batches mm -hmm. that they get. Wow. It's made from uh, Monastrell and um, the Label. vineyards that it comes from are what we call ungrafted vineyards. Mm -hmm. So they Really need, a pure... They were, there was a problem where a bug called yeah. phylloxera mm -hmm. came into uh, the vineyards in Europe and mm -hmm. basically ate the rootstock. Mm -hmm. the only way Silently, that, slowly. Yeah, the only <laughs> way that people were able to save it is they would graft onto American rootstock. And um, this one vineyard that Trapeo comes from never had to do that process. Mm -hmm. So it oh. is like you're taking a step into history because you actually get mm -hmm. to taste the wine from the rootstock that it came from. Hundreds of years ago. Yeah, from the mm -hmm. same same mm -hmm. idea. So it's okay. it's a it's a neat, you know, comparison there and what we like to, to show in it is how you can take a big red wine and kind of put a soft glove over the mm -hmm. top of it and they smooth it out with some mm -hmm. nice oak. And Very small quantities of being made of this particular wine because the fruit, when it gets that old, it doesn't produce as many great uh, clusters. And so the production is very small, so that's very, very, uh, very limited. Would you say? And in the vineyard, mm -hmm. this is another interesting mm -hmm. piece. Um, these, on both of the monastrels, these are bush vines. Mm -hmm. You know, you think of no guide wires to hold the vines. Oh, they're just I, like I a do. little shrub. It's like a little bush. Uh -huh, little this bush. is like a little shrub. Yeah, and okay. it's, mm -hmm. they're separated by a large amount of territory there because um, the rootstock have been there so long. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, they're it's established almost, root yeah, system. almost two meters like mm -hmm. apart. That's and right. So it's a. Um, it's, it, the vineyard looks different. Mm -hmm. um, so this looks different than the typical vineyard that we that we would see because they, it produces less fruit. Would you say there's a more intense flavor to the fruit that is produced? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should we taste this? I mean, yeah, we've been talking about it's it. It's red wine time. Okay, red <laughs> wine. We did the white, and that was yummy. And so trapeo, um, mm -hmm. and this is this is the little bush guy <laughs> who's <laughs> yep. This is uh, my one little Spanish lesson. They okay. told me that means spirit of the bull. Of mm, the bull. Yes. Very good. So you can see okay. the, the, the bull on the... Um, it's a gorgeous oh, label, too. Yeah, it is. Oh, it's, it was interesting to hear you say that uh, this comes in a beautiful box, and when you were coming back, you made your husband carry it back for you. <laughs> so, so let's have a little sip. Okay. To life. Mm, to life. Cheers. Look at the color. It's beautiful. It is gorgeous. This was our parting gift ah, wow. good. from Natalie. Uh, I taste tannins too. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this is a serious wine. It's got a lot of a lot of fruit, a lot of um, spice to it mm -hmm. still. Mm -hmm. A lot of spice. Um, that is nice. I'm understanding now what you're saying about how you can look at the land and know. So we were in Argentina mm -hmm. last week. Now we're in Yecla, and the different description of the land um, is reflected in the 
what happens in the glass. Mm -hmm. It is. Well, and it's also the grapes and what people have, have learned over mm -hmm. years to say this is the right stuff to grow in this soil. You now people have, have been trying to do as much as possible to get the, the expression of the fruit mm -hmm. in everything. That's, that's, right. that's the being a shepherd of what you're what you're able to do that's what this winery the winemaker here um, Pedro is, is looking to do is just I, I've got all these this great fruit from the cooperative from the, the mm -hmm. growers from you know, even his, his father's mm -hmm. vineyards mm -hmm. and all he's really trying to do is to show that um, with minimal wine techniques mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's and it's the integrity and it's different every year too which I think is huh? really important with these small producers is that they let whatever the vintage is shine through ah and they don't try to manipulate they want you know they let it shine if it's a so consistent in terms of the winemaking practices but also being respectful of this year the grape tastes one way next year exactly mm -hmm. oh. and with this area it, this is also a somewhat of a value area mm -hmm. you know we mm -hmm. we've tried as marquee to find yeah. wines that are great value for the price and um this I, I think of as a fifty dollar wine that doesn't cost you fifty dollars. That's right. So, yes, that's right. Um, that's nice. And that that is wonderful about how we've expanded our our interests and your portfolio to include parts of the globe that normally we don't have the opportunity to be tasting and drinking. Thank you for hosting Thank our you. venture to Yecla, Spain. Cheers. 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 Nos vemos.